Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? Me? I'm a wee bit disappointed with one of the software companies that I've been doing a lot of championing for. I might comment on that a little bit later on in this episode of Ask Dotto Tech. This is the show where you ask questions and I answer them or do my best to answer your questions. So today we are going to go through some of those questions and I might just do a little wee bit of a rant as well on Dotto Tech. <laughs> Well, my rant can keep for a few moments. Instead, let's start by answering a few of your questions. Now, Ask Dotto Tech is the show where you ask questions. You can ask them to me here in YouTube in the comments area. You can send me an email. I will do my best to answer. I can't promise that I answer every question, but I do my best to answer as many as I can. And let's start with an email that comes from our, my friend Larry, who said he took my course last week on creating courses, which is awesome. I talked about the benefit of using Evernote. Question, does Evernote have similarities to Dropbox? I'm a huge user of Dropbox and wondering if Evernote would work as well. And I get a surprising number of people asking me if Evernote and Dropbox are similar. And I guess that's because Evernote is such a difficult product to explain exactly what it is. But Larry and everybody else who's having some confusion about the difference between Evernote and Dropbox, here, allow me to explain it to you. They both allow you to store information, but Evernote is more like a clipboard or a, uh, a, a collection service where you pull all the little bits of information that you want to store and you want to retrieve later and you hold them, all of your little notes. They don't have to be documents, they can just be little snippets of information. Dropbox is where you store and possibly share and possibly back up documents. So for example, if you were preparing a presentation, as you're getting all of the different little slides together and getting the narrative for your presentation together, you would be using Evernote to clip all of the little bits of information into Evernote so you have them all collected in one place. When you're ready to actually create the presentation, you would create the document in, in PowerPoint or in Keynote and you would store that in Dropbox, so you could access it from any computer that has access to the web, you could share it with other people, but that's where the finished document will live. You use Evernote in the research to finally create that document. It stores all those little loose bits of information for you. That's one way of looking at the difference between Evernote and Dropbox. I hope that that helped answer your question. And next from Stuart Griffith, who does not ask a question, but answers a question which might not have been asked, but is a useful tip anyways. So I was talking in uh, the video dealing with distraction about uh, turning off your notifications so that as you are working, you aren't receiving different notifications, different desktop notifications, especially useful if you're recording a webinar or if you just need to concentrate. Now, typically speaking, what I would tell people to do is go into their system preferences, go into notifications, and there you can turn on the do not disturb notification, which gives you this little tab here that uh, basically sets it up for do not disturb. But Good old Stuart, or sorry, Stanford, has a better solution. He says, just hold down the option key as you click on the notification center and it toggles the do not disturb on and off. So this is fantastic if you're in the middle of a Skype call or you just need to concentrate for an hour so that you don't get those notifications that lead to distraction. You can turn them on and off just by holding down your option key as you click on the notification center. Thank you, Stanford. And we will wrap things up from Plan Read Geek with Claire who says, I don't know why, but I'm scared to start Blab. I'm mean, scared at starting Blab. Plan Read Geek with Claire. I think you probably shouldn't bother starting with our friends over at Blab because this is my rant. The folks at Blab, for now, now we did a great video on Blab a way back. Uh, I loved the idea of the product. Blab was a tool that allowed us to do social conversations. It allowed us to uh, create a instant feed that people could watch, they could, uh, they could listen, they could uh, participate. We had four different video screens all happening at the same time. It was as close a thing to live radio and others as uh, live radio as anything that I'd ever done. Uh, and it was engaging. There was a good mobile app for it. They had everything going for them. But the company has pivoted. The company has moved away from continuing to deliver Blab 
to the as the same product basically around having conversations social conversations so and they basically abandoned the development of all of the tools that were ever so important for us to use it for any sort of a social broadcast environment and this to me is a massive disappointment because they positioned to all of us, to all of the social media types out there, they positioned that here was a tool, here was a platform that we should invest in, that we should build a community in, that we should build a market in, and that they would be there and they would evolve with us and give us a way to continue to deliver and to continue to reach our audience. And many people in the social media space did just that. They committed to doing regular Blab shows, but as Blab pulled away from supporting uh, the, the platform, it became more and more difficult for them. And now they're looking for new options. They're moving to Facebook Live and to other places, and maybe those other places would have become more significant anyways. But the bottom line is, here was a well-funded company that had a great idea, that had a good following, that had people who were engaging and believing what they said, and investing our time in producing content to deliver on their platform, which made it more robust and made it more valuable. Uh, and they basically abandoned everybody. So shame on you blabbers. I am not at all pleased with that. Uh, bottom line is we see a, the case of another startup that didn't have a monetization model at the end. And at the end of the day, they didn't know how they were going to make money and they didn't have that baked in from the beginning. And to a certain extent, it's our bad for, for because we had constantly were asking them, how are you going to make money? How are you going to make money? We never really heard back from them how they were. And ultimately, did they decided, I guess, that they won't be making money on the platform as as it was and they're going to change it up but I know a lot of people got burned a lot of people invested a lot of time and energy uh, and I, th I think that that's just a shame and it's really too bad because the platform as it was coming together I thought was excellent for social conversations and social broadcast so we're gonna finish things up with a downer on blab Blah. Well, that's all the time that we have for today's Ask Dotto Tech. If you, I hope that you found today's video valuable. There's three ways for you to stay in touch with us here on Ask Dotto Tech or at the Dotto Tech channel. First is please subscribe to this channel. Secondly, subscribe to our newsletter. Then you can hear about upcoming live events, tutorials, and webinars and trainings that we present here on Dotto Tech. And finally, Dotto Tech is a community-funded channel supported through the generosity of you folks at the crowdfunding site Patreon. So I encourage you to drop by our Patreon page, have a look, and discover exactly what perks are included with supporting Dotto Tech because those perks, they'd be a little bit of awesome. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.